Hi everyone and thanks for joining me today. I'd like to briefly go over what people call the scientific method, which I believe is a bit of an outdated term, so I propose that we go over what, what I like to call explorative research step by step. And we'll be doing this by covering 11 steps to really go over what explorative research really means. So, the first thing in which any scientist or any person who's genuinely curious about the world around them is that they collect sensory data using their five senses, such as touch, smell, taste, see, and hear. So, uh, the first thing we do is we make our observations. And we collect the sensory data around us. And what we do is our five senses pull off a whole bunch of chemical uh, signals in our brain and then uh, stimulates prior knowledge that we know to then make what's known as an inference. For instance, an example I like to use with my students is that if you happen to smell pizza, then maybe you can infer or presume that pizza is what's going to be in the cafeteria. So next up is that you want to try and gather up as much pre-done knowledge as you possibly can concerning the topic that you're now curious about. And this is done via a literature review. So, literature. In the literature review, you try and consult as many uh, pieces of literature or media for that matter that may have uh, an answer for you before you actually go and conduct a test to see um, what it is you're finding about. So once you've gathered up all the prior information that is available and you've gone ahead and done your observation and your inferences, you can now start to formulate a hypothesis. Now a hypothesis is not an educated guess. No, a hypothesis is basically a presumption that we are making based off of all of our prior knowledge. And it is a conclusion that we're going to try and draw towards without having collected any data yet. So, for instance, uh, the, what I like to do is I say we have an action, we have a reaction, and then we have a reasoning for that reaction. That action is what we do as known as an independent variable, the one thing that we want to try and change in an experiment. The resulting consequence is the dependent variable, the one thing that we're looking out for. And then uh, the reasoning is, okay, now we're trying to explain why is that reaction taking place. So the next step is the hypothesis. So once we have our hypothesis in place, we can then start to design the test, the experiment in which we're going to conduct to see if our hypothesis is true or not. And we do so by uh, setting up a, uh, a procedure and also identifying any materials in which we may need. So procedure and materials. In the procedure to make sure you have consequential steps or sequential steps that happen in order that someone else could easily follow, and also for materials, identifying any materials that may or that may have any uh, say uh, quantifiable amounts such as milliliters or grams. Uh, the next thing we want to do is to actually now run our procedures with the materials which we have, otherwise known as running the test and um, collecting our data. So run tests. collect it. Awesome! So now, that's the fun part. You get to go experiment, collect all the data, and do all the things you want to do. Perfect! Now you have all these numbers and facts and figures and answers. What are you going to do with them? So now we get to get to the data analysis. Now, it is important to note that we are not drawing any conclusions yet during the analysis. All we're doing is we're just kind of organizing our data and cleaning things up to show, to cleanly show and display what the data is starting to suggest. And this is usually done by like graphs and charts to really lay out and easily explain, okay, here's the data that I've collected so far, and also give a written analysis of the data without, again, drawing any conclusions just yet. But the next part, the conclusion, is where we make our, uh, our formal statement of whether the hypothesis was uh, supported or rejected, and that's what the data is suggesting. So again, it's not to say that the data shows, it's the data suggests, because again, it's not 100% confirmed. Um, but you would usually state, start a conclusion with, my hypothesis was supported or my hypothesis was rejected, and you explain why thereafter. Okay, the next part, which is one of my favorite parts as a teacher to read, is the error analysis.
And this is the opportunity to share what went wrong during an experiment. Now, typically, there are two potential ways that things could go wrong. It could either by, be by uh, the user's doing, or it could be done by outside influences in which the, the scientist or experimenter had no control over. So basically, it is a means of accounting for any potential error that could have happened and ways to improve upon for further experiments to make sure that we minimize errors as much as possible. Uh, trust me, you will never get an experiment 100% error-free. Part of life. The next part is also one of my favorite parts, and it's the summary. And the summary is the only part in the entire sequence here that you are allowed to introduce yourself into uh, the process. So I didn't use any pronouns, such as I, we, us, you, them. This is the only part here that that is allowed. So, summary. It's the chance for your personal reflection on the experiment because, hey, you are human, and this can take a lot of time and money to put a lot of effort into. And the last part, which is one of my favorite, is publish or die. It definitely deserves an exclamation point. So you've developed all this vast knowledge. It's amazing. You spent so much time and maybe a lot of money. You probably want to share this new knowledge, and it can maybe even help out a whole lot of people or even communities as a whole. So you got to make sure that you're able not only to do science, but to communicate science as well. And this could be through articles. This could be videos. This could be through podcasts. However you deem fit to share the knowledge out there, get science out there, and be good at it, communicating it too. Or suffer the consequences and not be recognized at all. And that's, that's the die part. All right, cool. That is the scientific method or sport of research step-by-step -step in a nutshell. And I hope you enjoyed your time here. Have yourself a wonderful rest of the day.